Welcome to another test ride video and I'm on a Harley Fat Bob. This has to be, without doubt, the biggest bike I've ever ridden. It's about 300 kilos or 320, I think, if it's fueled up. 1700 cc motor. It's a big old beast. I mean, maybe not quite by Harley standards. If you look around the showroom, some of the bigger touring bikes with the full fairings and luggage look huge compared to this. So I guess it's all relative, but certainly compared to the bike I'm normally riding, my ER6, which is 650cc, about 190 kilos maybe. Uh, yeah, this is a big step up. Patrick at um, Wars, where I just picked this bike up from, did say to me though that it's a relatively easy bike to ride given how big it is. And I've got to agree actually, I was a little bit hesitant when I first got on, especially because as soon as you come out of the dealers, you've got to go right round a roundabout, like a small one as well. And it's always quite heavy traffic there, so certainly a test of agility and handling as soon as you roll it off the forecourt. But it's easy actually, surprisingly easy. I always get a little bit stumped by the pegs being so far forward when I ride a Harley. I remember last time. It took me a couple of goes to get my feet on the pegs. But once you're um once you're on it, it's easy. I don't know if I'd be comfortable commuting through London on this. So a lot of the riding that I do is straight into the middle of Oxford Circus from South London. Perhaps when you get used to it though, it's not so difficult. But um, just generally around on the road, it's surprisingly easy to ride. The good thing about Wars, the dealer just there, is that you're about two minutes from the A20 and the M20. So you do get a chance to stretch the legs of the bike a bit. And um, with this bike being 1700 cc's, I think it's about 90 or 95 horsepower, but they don't really quote that on the Harley side. And absolutely, it is really, really torquey. As soon as you open it up, you've got to flex those abdominal muscles to keep your torso upright. Certainly um, pulls you back. It's quite a rumbly, big old thing. You can see how much the uh, mirrors vibrate in there and the levers. But I don't mind that so much. I've just been in uh, India and Nepal. Check my recent videos if you want to see them. And I was riding an Enfield out there. That's a single, so. Um, that vibrates quite a lot, but I think it's all part of the character and that's the same with the Harley. When I tested the Roadster in October last year, one of the things that I loved about that bike was the sound it made. And I think that's because it had the Screaming Eagle exhaust on it, which is Harley's aftermarket parts brand. And it sounded absolutely crazy. So I was pretty excited about riding this bike, but unfortunately this has just got the standard pipes on it, which are much, much quieter. So one can only assume that with the right exhaust on this probably sounds like an absolute monster in terms of the riding position it's got a really really comfy big 
buckety seat so my bum's happy as I say the pegs are a long way forward so that can take a little bit of getting used to if you don't ride this kind of bike regularly but when I say a bit of getting used to I mean just a few minutes the bars are quite nice and high here so it's a very relaxed feeling I can imagine doing some longer miles on this bike for sure most of the riding that I do is two up with my wife and so when we rode the Roadster last year, uh, she came with me to test that one out. And one of the main things that we didn't think was great about it was the pillion position. It was a very small seat and just the leather strap and then the pegs were okay, but generally I think she found it a little bit hard work. So that's why the dealer suggested that I try this out because the Dyna is a, you know, a bit of a bigger bike and there are more options I think for pillion seats. You can get the sissy bars, you might be able to get a slightly bigger seat all that kind of thing but unfortunately uh, she couldn't come with me today to test that aspect out and besides this is a pretty big step up for me in terms of size of bike so it's probably best i test it myself first so maybe we'll come back another day to do that I must admit I'm really really fond of the styling on this bike I was reading up before I came out to ride it and saw that the Fat Bob is the bike that the Terminator rides in the first film I believe anyway that's what the uh, article said so it's definitely that classic Harley look but there's a few touches on it that I really like as well like the indicators on the front there are sort of integrated into the levers so they're very very subtle it's a nice touch and I really like the twin headlights on the front there. I think they look awesome. Not something that I've personally noticed on a lot of Harleys, but I think it just looks absolutely great. And it's got twin tail lights on the back as well to match. To be honest, I think I prefer it when the Harleys have the integrated tail lights into the um, indicators. But you can't have everything, I guess. But there's certainly some nice little touches like the on off switch here as well is nicely integrated into the whole design and i like the fuel gauge here as well mirroring the fuel cap on the other side so i just pulled over to show you guys in terms of starting this bike the key actually it's just for the steering lock down here uh, you can also use it to lock and unlock this so ACC is for accessory and it's just for the having the lights on and using the computer um, when you're parked up you can turn it off here or onto ignition then you've got your kill switch so you turn that on and as long as you've got the key on you then it'll start but it's like a presence sensor key so I think it's pretty cool I quite like that, to be honest. Woo! It's a 40 limit here. No slit road, but I don't think there'll be any problems getting this bike up to speed. So the uh, computer here has got everything you would expect, it's got a gear indicator, fuel range as well as a fuel gauge there, your miles, your clock, everything on the dash is pretty standard I'd say, it's fairly regular, it's got a really loud horn actually, the dealer showed me that, I'm not going to honk it now in this lovely little village, and also you won't get the full effect, but trust me it's loud. Maybe the only thing that might be different to the bikes that you, you guys are riding is the indicators. So you've got a button on either side, press it on one side to go that way and press it on the other to go the other of course. It's self cancelling though which is cool so it's based on lean angle and speed. So for someone like me who always forgets to turn them off, that's quite a nice little trick. But if it doesn't turn them off, then uh, you tap them again to switch them off manually. The ride is actually a lot softer than the 
Roadster that I tested. So even compared to my ER6, the Roadster felt pretty firm. But this is a much more comfortable bike. And I guess that's because it's geared towards bigger miles. It's got a bigger tank, comfier seat, comfier suspension. So I can see how it's a lot better for that kind of thing. I can go up to 60 here, so. Yeah, anyway, one of the fat bobs in the in the um, showroom had a, a screen on it. Just the regular kind of clear one. And I guess something like that would really help with the big miles. Also, the rear suspension is uh, adjustable with the preload. So again, that's uh, good for touring if you're two up and with some luggage as well. Firm things up so that it doesn't sag too much. So all in it's pretty great, I'd say the only thing, and I think this is true of a lot of Harleys, is that the brakes aren't exactly brilliant. Obviously I'm coming from a Kawasaki, which does have decent brakes and it's much lighter as well. So perhaps it's not a fair test, and the sort of riding that you're going to be doing on this, you probably don't need, you know, R1 style brakes, but they're just a little bit less responsive than what I'm used to. You really have to give them a proper squeeze to get it to stop. And I'm not sure what that would feel like if you had to do an emergency stop as well. It does have ABS, so that's gonna help, but. But as I say, just in and around the traffic, I've noticed that they aren't as, um, as sharp as what I'm used to is all I'm saying. When I test ride bikes, you know, I'm reluctant to say whether a bike is good or bad or not because I think different people want different things out of their bikes. So in terms of comparing it to the Roadster, you know, it is similar in many respects, but obviously it's just a lot better for those who want to go touring or do the longer miles. It's slightly more comfortable, more grunt, more torque slightly comfier position and probably and more accessories for pillions and those kinds of things so that's what it's for i guess big comfy miles i'm definitely enjoying riding it that's for sure so i'm gonna shut up now and just enjoy the ride back from here if you've got any questions please do put them in the comments below and if you want to see more videos like this, then please click subscribe.